And here's the video again, in case you thought you were dreaming last night. The Penguins did, in fact, make the playoffs. And we live in a now culture, and Andrew Luck is right now. He's young. He's a winner. He's good at fantasy football. I also got to see James Conner work on his quarterback game, trying to hit Tyler Boyd in the back of the end zone on a fade. They didn't quite connect, but I think both their regular jobs are safe. Oh, of course, this is a team that hadn't made the playoffs since 1992, and here they are today, the home opener. Many experts picking them to win the World Series. Keon Broxton, one of those athletic outfielders the Pirates have become so known for. So the curve, 3-3 three and three so far on the season this year. Lots to be excited for. Tyler Glasnow going to pitch tomorrow night. Tonight's starting pitcher, Nate Pope. Nate, now you've pitched in this tournament before, but never in the opening night game. How would you describe how you're feeling leading up. Roll Tide, give me Kerwinsville. Uh, I'm, I'm just making friends all over the, the state of Pennsylvania right now. Uh, we got I shouldn't talk with my mouth full, but <laughs> the peppers mix very well with the cheese and the meat. If you're sitting at home on your couch right now, you got to get down here to try this. The game just started. I got to get a napkin. The Pirates are an organization built on their prospects, and Tyler Glasnow is listed number one. It seems as long as this equals this, Tommy John's going to be as big a name in baseball as Babe Ruth. Yeah, everything's canceled. What do you mean everything's canceled? Was... I don't care if you have to drive all the way up to Cameron County to get something on. You better be in the 11 o'clock show. Get out. With no story and no leads, did what any good reporter would do. Head out into the world. Well, the field may be wet, but spirits are high. Who will stop the rain? Good evening. It's been a long stretch of must wins for Pitt. They've done a great job of winning the tough ones, but the so-called easy ones, not so much. Losses to Virginia Tech and a team like Wake Forest could haunt them this March. And speaking of ghosts, so that Scotty Wilbekin hitting a three? No, it's his brother Mitchell getting it done for Wake Scotty, eliminating Pitt a year ago. It's hard to compare to something because nothing's really like it. Going, it's like going to your friend's house, but instead of like, it's like living with your friend's parents kind of thing. Everything we have to worry about is taken care of with our billets, and we never have to worry about anything outside of hockey. We just gotta, it's a great place to escape from hockey and just hang out. Luke Lynch and Casey Lincoln held Eat, Sleep, Live Hockey. Their school, their job is hockey. Their parents for the time being are Holly and Mel Lees. The one night, they, the, the guys said they were going over to another one of the guys' houses to watch The Walking Dead. And they walked out the door, and my husband looked at me and he goes, why would they want to do that? They could watch you and I walk around here all day, because we're kind of boring. Kind of boring, or as Luke and Casey say, kind of perfect. Holly and Mel are one of 15 billet families that house anywhere from one to three Tomahawks players. Most are young families with some extra room. For the Lees, it was a little different. Their kids had already come and gone. I, I was afraid that I couldn't relate to them. And that's the only thing, and I, I it had a lot of insecurity about it. And the respect is just unbelievable that the, the boys show towards us. We're not here to replace their mom and dad. We're kind of the surrogate parents. My parents would expect me to respect them as, as if they were my parents, because they're caring for me, like supplying for me. And so I try to respect them as if they were my mom and dad, and they do the same. Everything they do benefits us. and. They love to see us do well as well as like we like to see like Mel got a finally got his job that he's been working for, so that makes that makes us pretty proud as well. And with that respect also comes responsibility. Beyond just coming home on time, there's the Lee's five-year-old grandson Bailey, a little hockey nut who wants nothing more than to be a part of the team. It was important for me to to for him to see kids that are, you know, older that he can look up to. He sees them on the ice, he gets so excited. He doesn't know how to read yet, but he knows every single player on the Penguins. So we can sit down and watch a hockey game with, with him, even though he's six years old and he can interact with us that way. Like any family, it isn't always perfect. And like for any parent, the hardest part is moving on. We know that's what the league's all about. Uh, we're here 
to help these kids get college scholarships. And I just try to make it as easy for them as, they, as, as it can be because I know they're chasing their dream. And if I can just be a little part of them chasing that dream, that, that's enough satisfaction for me. Living with the guys has inspired Holly to pursue her own dream of learning to skate. Every week she's been coming here to take lessons to join her grandson on the ice and says she even plans to pick up a stick. In Johnstown, Pat Walter, Six Sports. How do you measure success? Is it in points scored? Because Ferndale's Ray Hinton has over a thousand. Is it in fans in the seats? Because this gym is absolutely packed. Or is it something bigger than that? For Ray and the Yellow Jackets, it's about becoming a family. Everybody here is just so together. There's no like different social classes. Everybody's friends, we're all one big family. And being at a smaller school, it allows us to really stay close-knit, tight, and uh, I believe, you know, not just in our team, uh, but it's starting to bleed over into the community, into the fan base, into the students. It's not just my 1,000 points, it's everybody's 1,000 points. Just as this family shares in Ray's success, they've also shared in his loss. Right before his freshman season, Ray learned of the death of his big brother, Jawan, a Marine serving out of a base in South Carolina. It was a loss that put life and basketball in perspective. It was like 1 o'clock in the morning when I first found out. And my mom, she was asleep, so she came up, and it was 7.30 in the morning. She came out up crying, and she just said, she said, I wonder, this makes me question why God does things like this. And I said, I don't know, I can't tell you, but we just got to stay faithful, and we got to just continue to live our lives. You never know when it could be our last day. For a teenager, I don't care if you lose a brother, a parent, a cousin, it's not easy to deal with. Um, but I think he was able to wrap himself into, you know, our family as a basketball team and basketball, and I, I think it really helped him get past the, the loss of his brother. You know, it made me look at things. Like, that's, how, that's why I look at things the way I do today, because no, no game is promised, no day is promised, nothing is promised. So I just go out there and I play every game like it's my last. A young man that's been through so much, Ray says he has so much more to do. He'll carry the memory of his brother with him on and off the court and honor him the best way he knows how, win. I dedicate all my games to him because I know he'll be proud if he was here watching. I remember when I was little, I used to always play basketball with him. And, you know, I know he's proud of me. Good evening. It was one of the biggest games of the year and also one of the biggest disappointments. Somerset just three points against Bishop Guilfoyle last week. Tonight they reset their sights on the district title, taking on Punxsutawney in our game of the week. No touchdowns last week for Somerset. That changed quickly tonight. First quarter, it's Jake Heupel, one of the best running backs you'll see, gone. 7-0. Eagles, the versatility of the Eagle offense on display tonight. Raven Beeman this time take the jet sweep and he yeah, runs, what is that, nine chucks? Those guys bringing Winter with them to Somerset. I'm still shivering late in the first. Chucks break through. Dakota Thomas finds Braxton, Jeff and Donnie. We got a game. It's 14 6 here. But then the Eagles just steamrolled. Dylan Barnes is going to find Beeman on the screen and similar to earlier. He outruns all 11 Chucks this time. Somerset moving on with a 50 to 12 win. Clearfield, they're hosting Johnstown, already up 13 to seven here. Going for more, Jake Wingate takes the jet sweep and no contain on the outside, that leads to a touchdown. 27, Bisons. Bisons threatening again here and it's Eric Sellers on the rollout. Gonna find Nick Kovalik, who's like, yeah, I'll catch that, thank you very much. 28 to seven. Johnstown trying to get back in this one, but Jeremy Updike's pass is tipped, and that's when pick six has happened. Ryan Lezer, a great stop and start there. He's gone. Bison's up big to garbage time, and it's Updike able to connect with Kareem Gibson for a score. Yeah, but the damage is done. Clearfield plays Somerset for the district title, and beware Berlin, beware Braden Fuffman. The junior running back tore up Portage last week. His reign on District 5A began tonight. Fuffman over 1,300 yards, 20 touchdowns on the year and rising. First offensive play. Mountaineers go to the pass. And it's Jake Grosick with the sack for Kahnema. Well, the next play, they would do what's right, just give the ball to Fuffman. Huge hole. And see you later. Hasta luego for the Spanish audience. A run so long I can 
barely show the whole thing on TV. 7-0 Mountaineers. Still first quarter. Berlin driving again. Fuffman right up the middle. Goes over 4,000 yards in his career on the play. Sets a school record. Still first quarter. And Doug Paul shares some of the wealth. Brenston Harding this time keeps it himself. I'm told the proper form and bench would be hostile to Luego there earlier. Berlin a force to be reckoned with. They win 61 to nothing. Everett trailing Myersdale, traveling to Myersdale. Sparse crowd tonight. Everett's first snap. Kyle Schaefer back to pass. Myers O'Connor Christner sets a tone with a snack. Sack. Raiders first series after a long drive. It's Jason Ritchie takes the toss off right tackle, bounces off, gets inside the pylon. It's seven nothing Raiders. Myersdale defense dominant tonight on third and long. Schaefer fakes up the middle, rolls left, and he's popped by Brandon Bear. That brings up a fourth down. Did you hear that hit? I could, and Warriors go for it. This time, Schaefer pitches to Jacob J, and he's leveled. Short of the sticks, ball goes to Myersdale. Late second quarter, starting QB Riley Christner, sitting this one out with an injury, so his brother Connor steps in. Looks deep, bounces off two Warriors, gets the Cole Clark. Myersdale down to the two, 20 seconds left in the half. Ty Hoover disappears in the pile, but comes out the other side for the touchdown. Red Raiders roll 27 to nothing. The District 6, double A. Forest Hills, underdogs up north taking on Tyrone. First quarter, Tyrone showing why. Garrett Hunter throws this to Matthew McConaughey in space. When it finally comes down, Silas Crawford grabs the score. But the Rangers, they have a star, and his name is Sharif Blau. Coming through with a textbook cutback run here. He's going to power his way for the score. You might see that one in top plays on Sunday. It's a tie game here, and the Eagles threatening again. Hunter on the rollout. Nearly falls, but he's able to find Crawford again. Tyrone takes the lead. It's Interstellar in the sequel. Alec Hunter able to add one more at the end of the half here as Tyrone rolls from there 35 to 7. Let's check on some scores. Southern Huntington 7, Mount Union 27, and Quad A Altoona falls to Pine Richland 49 to 7. And plenty more to come here on the Friday Football Final. David and Goliath matchup plus our team of the week.